Well, with the warmer months well and truly upon us, one of my favourite styles of fishing, other than floater fishing, is stalking. Catching them at really close quarters, within a few yards, is very, very fun. It's an exhilarating style of fishing, and there's nothing beats watching them take the bait. So, I'm gonna give you five of my top tips for catching carp out the edge. So before I go into the actual fishing, I thought I would just talk through the hardware that I use when stalking because obviously the priority is traveling as light as possible. So I just take a rucksack, my mat, my baiting scoop, obviously rod and reel, and my bait. So let's start first of all with a little scoop. This is actually really, really old scoop. I've probably had this 12 or 15 years and I only use it for maybe three sections, something like that, because most of the time I'm fishing in close. But obviously the emphasis of this is baiting up tightly. I'm not really one for scattering bait all over the swim because quite often the spots are very, very small, especially at this lake where we're at today. There's lots of weed and the spots are often sort of no bigger than a dinner plate or my unhooking mat. So I like to keep things nice and tight using this scoop, so I always have that in my armory. I've got a cradle style unhooking mat because this kind of acts as a bit of a rod bag, I guess. I can place my rod in it, my baiting scoop in it, and my landing net as well. As you'll notice, my landing net is a little two-piece job, which obviously keeps things minimal and small again. My rod is a telescopic rod, that is nine foot. Obviously it's retractable, so if I get in some really, really tight situations, I can actually use it nice and short. The reel, although I do normally have a smaller reel on there, I have just got one of my Baziers, but yeah, a nice small outfit there. My bait is in the bucket and my rucksack. This is just my main rucksack. I'm not one for chopping and changing between rucksacks, so I just use my main one. But yeah, as you can see, I travel really, really light. It enables me to keep mobile, keep on the move, keep bait in little different areas, and uh, it isn't too much hassle. One of the first things that I like to do, when possible, is to bait a few different spots. Prime them up so I can basically go back and try each spot that I've baited. It just keeps things consistent, doesn't put all your eggs in one basket, and you can create more chances basically. So first things first, I've just arrived at the first spot. I do know this swim quite well, so I'm just gonna pop a little bit of bait on a little clear spot right in the edge there. And I'm gonna hop along and do a few more swims that are luckily free today. So once they're all baited up, I'll then go back to the first spot, try that first, then do second, third and fourth and so on. So let's get some bait out, see if we can get some feeding. As I mentioned earlier on, I like to use a bait scoop in this situation, or a baiting pole even, rather than throwing bait all over the swim, all in the weed and everywhere. I like to bait the little holes accurately with the pole. Not loads, a few bits of crumb, a few pellets. He's trying to catch them, not keep feeding them. So. If you go piling it in, it's just gonna take longer to get a bite. Now, I know that the carp in here love boilies and they love pellets. So, I'm basically using a little mixture of eight mil halibuts and of course, Pacific tuna, of which I've also oiled up in salmon oil just to give it a little bit more oomph. So yeah, not loads of bait in there, but more than enough to get a few carp grubbing around. So one thing you will notice is there aren't any round baits in there. The fish seem to feed a lot less cautiously on chops, crumb and pellets. And I whittle down my hook bait as well to match those offerings. And uh, yeah, 
they just seem to be a lot more willing on bits and pieces like that. So let's ship it out there, get it on the spot. So I wanted to talk rigs as well, because that is a very, very important thing when fishing in the edge. Generally, probably 99.9% .9 of the time when I'm fishing in the edge, I'm fishing on a clear spot. So I can actually see where I'm fishing. Now, as a result of that, I like to keep things as concealed as possible. So you'll notice that I'm using a fluorocarbon hook link. Now, I do normally use a fluorocarbon leader as well, but it's very, very snaggy on here. So I have opted for rig tubing just for a little bit more protection. Now, the rig I've opted for is a rig that I've got a lot of confidence in. It's kind of a multi-rig sort of slip D presentation, which allows me to change the hook nice and quickly. There is a size four Kamakura on there. And if like me, you've seen fish feeding in the edge, they can be very, very cautious. So I use an ultra sharp hook. That is a sharpened hook, a size four Kamakura wide gate. That is through to some IQ2 fluorocarbon in 20 pounds. Now, I use 20 pounds because I like to ensure that it kicks away, well away from the lead, which means that it's not going to tangle. It can reset itself as well. And carp do find that stiffer hook link tricky to deal with. That is all bright knotted to the inner of end trap. And as I said, I do that kind of slip D multi-rig style just so I can change that hook after each fish. There is a little anti-tangle sleeve on there as well. And again, that is aiding in kicking that hook link away from the lead when I position it on the lake bed. Hook baits wise, again, I like to keep things pretty simple. Here, this is just a whittled down Pacific tuna with a little bit of Northern Special on the top. Now, you'll notice that it's pink. Pink works extremely well on that lake. My old mucker, Brad, has always said to me, who knows the lake really well, that pink works well on here and I've always done well on it too. So just a little pink topper. Again, if I'm noticing they're being really cautious and they're actually spooking off that colour, I may just go to a simple Pacific tuna wafter or bottom bait. Now, the great thing about edge fishing is you are watching them feed. So if I notice that they're getting rid of the rig easily, I may shorten that down to four inches maybe even shorter at times, but I will start at this length normally. It's all about watching them, learning what they do, and if they're getting away with it, shorten the rig, and you may find that you get better results. So yeah, keeping it simple, nice big lead, four ounce lead. Again, if I find that they're getting away with it, I can sometimes get that even to an eight ounce or even a 10 ounce lead, and make sure that I drop it on the take. But yeah, very simple presentation, and one that works extremely well for me. So one of the most important things when you're stalking is not to let them know that you are there. Hence the name stalking. So there's a few things that may sound obvious, but they're not always obvious. And I see many people blowing it before they've even started. Obviously keeping noise to an absolute minimum I know I'm talking now, but I'm talking at a low level and there's actually a couple of fish feeding right by my feet now. So, watching where you're walking, light footsteps. You don't want to be cracking sticks or treading on snails or anything like that. You want to be as quiet as possible. Oh, there's a bit of fish just swimming through now. Concealing yourself amongst the trees, amongst the bushes, any of the bankside sort of foliage you want to be tucking yourself into like I am now. There's actually fish feeding right by my feet. Hood up, camouflage clothing. You don't want to be peeking over there in big bright red t-shirts or anything like that. So yeah, keeping yourself concealed is probably the most important thing if you want to be watching those carp feed. So they seem to be quite happy feeding down there now. I'm going to need to get a rig in position, I think. 
So one thing that I always like to do before casting out is to put bait in before I cast. If there's fish on the spot, it's very, very important not to spook them with your rig, or preferably not spook them at all, but if fish are feeding on the spot, then just a couple of flicks of boily, a few pellets would be enough just to send them on their way before you lower your rig in, because like I said, a rig will spook them and they may not return, whereas the odd pellet, the odd bit of boily crumb won't as much. Ideally, there'll be nothing on the spot and you'll be able to lower it in, but if you can't see the spot or if the fish won't move off the spot, like I said, just a pellet or a bit of boily crumb will be enough. So I can't actually see the bottom that clearly down there, so I'm gonna flick a couple of baits in there just to make sure. Packer that was. Well, how about that? for proof of the pudding. Or is it proof in the pudding? Whatever it is, that is proof that if you get stalking right, you can catch belting carp just like this one. <laughs> 